we'll just zoom in on a, this one again to show up close you know it's a little sloppy but it shows the knife strokes on the trunk that's that one I guess we may as well have a quick look at this one as well you know it's off towards the edge of the painting so I've kept the values down on it so it doesn't stand out and now we'll go over to these little guys just sticks not a lot of substance there, but they still glint, you know? A little bit of light catches them, and they're pretty important. So, so far, all of them, except for this trunk, are done with ultramarine blue and um, raw umber and uh, burnt sienna. This one, I've used cobalt blue in place of ultramarine blue. I don't know if you can even see on camera. Um, it's even only a slight difference in, you know when I see it face to face but uh, anyway okay those are the tree trunks um, of the of the uh, deciduous trees on that side well these are again they're on the edge of the canvas and I can't think of a good reason to put any light on them Well, I won't, or you know, not very much light anyway. Let's let's put it that way. A little more ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. too much about staying in the lines and going dark just before just before they disappear under the over under the canopy and I'm probably a little uh, probably a little on the dark side there actually let's just put a little more light let's have that one catching some light all right and a little bit there. That I don't mind light underneath, you know, on the underside of this branch coming out because we're picking up light from this area. You know, there's all very ambient light here. These are far enough into the thick bush, there's no sunlight hitting them at all, really. Things are just toning down at that point. So, we don't need light there. Yeah, I suppose that one's interesting enough. And let's do the same here. Again, a little bit of light. I'll even let that one catch some. Because that'll indicate that it's coming towards us a little bit. A little darker again, disappearing under the canopy. Whoops, made a bit of a mess there. I'm not even worried. I'm not even worried about the direction of the light there, really. You know, it's just ambient. Mostly worried about keeping these ones subdued. Okay, I may have to 
This doesn't look very anchored. It doesn't look like it's disappearing behind the bush. Also, as the canopy comes around, I may put a stroke or two just to help indicate. You know, these are kind of floating ethereally right now. So, the bat's coming with step six. This painting will have a lot of little spots that I need to touch uh, during the sort of the, as I call it, the step six of, of, the, of the, which is really the sort of the final completion of the painting. And one more under here. Because this is I might leave I might not let any light catch this one at all. I might just keep it dark midtones really. So that it sisters more equally with the large trunk. behind the big tree that we're dealing with. And there's enough light you know, it's fairly toned down here. As we get down here, there's a lot of light coming from behind. So if I were to lay light on this trunk, it would weaken the trunk. So, not necessary. See this trunk, light, it, light behind it, as the trunk goes down, there's not so much light behind it. So, how about if we give it that. Now it has a bit of interest. And, Maybe that trunk's going to show up again down here a little bit. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Best to leave that. Best to leave that. Now what you don't see so much on... Okay, let me just back the camera up. I think I'm going to... I, I regularly uh, forget to uh, zoom back when I when I would like to talk about something. And I, if I can convey a message to anybody or to you, then I kind of need to back it up a little bit. So in general, in, the, in a case like this, you know, if these trees were all on an open field and there were no canopy above them and no canopy to the left, you know, uh, uh, and no sort of various trees catching, uh, casting their own shadows, you would have very predictably light on the left hand side of all of these trunks, right? What we have here is some sunlight filtering down through the leaves, catching the tops in places, not in others, because of course it's filtering through the leaves and there are openings in the canopy in the in the, in the canopy some places, but not in others. So some trees will catch more light than others. Um, so what you end up having is this we'll consider, you know, our main source of light, no, actually our main source of light as it, as it pertains to here is really this area, okay? So these trees are picking up light. That's why I have a little bit of, a little bit of light even on the underside of branches because it's reflecting light from this area. You'll see it most clearly on this tree. A little bit here, a little bit here. Uh, while at the same time maintaining a darker trunk as it disappears into the canopy, or or a bunch of a bunch of foliage uh, under each under each uh, on each trunk, it just goes darker because of course it's got this this foliage over over the trunk, right? 
Um, so you have sort of an ambient light source, which gives them all a bit of shape. Even though the light's coming from above and the left, look at these ones. There's no light coming from the left on these ones. The only light that there is at all is coming from the right-hand side. Um, these won't receive the highlights that this did because, again, it's too close to the edge of the painting. This trunk will probably be fairly dark. Well, it'll be very dark under here, but it'll get some light down the entire trunk and mostly on the left say for example you know from 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 here from from here this way it'll be sort of you know um, a mid uh, dark to mid tone from there to there it'll be a little darker and then there will be a slash of light along the right hand side picking up this light Okay, I think that's it for the moment. Uh, I suppose next we'll play with the ever the little these little evergreens. I may remove this one or at the very least shorten it. Um, I really like how, how this this has a little blob of foliage separate from the tree. You know you know that it's attached, but uh, but I've got kind of a line going on here, and if I shorten it, I think that might help to alleviate the the strength of that line. Um, we'll see, I'll play. This work to do, this work, there's a little bits of work all over the place that have to be done in the so-called painted in areas already. Anyway, I don't know how long this video is, but uh, I don't think it's super short. Talk to you soon. Well, I changed my mind. <laughs> After sitting back, and having a look at the painting as a whole, I thought, okay, that you know, I I am I, I decided to put some light uh, on on the right hand side of these trunks, picking it up from you know over to our right. Now I really do have to strengthen a bit of the bush, just where the trunk enters the bush. The trunks enter the bush. That's fine. But I, here, something else I, I kind of like about this: our, our our strongest source of light in the painting is is low and to the left. So almost like shining a flashlight from from uh, from under your chin you know the horror movies casting a shadow upward it's kind of a, a neat effect and I like the look of it on these trunks as well and the painting as a whole is easily strong enough to support these flecks of light on the left.